All right, so today we are uh, at an, in an elevated place. So we're down here at the Galleon. We are actually going to install a Starlink and uh, our plan is to mount it right here. So there was a satellite dish that was right here, pretty standard boat satellite dish, it's in a dome. Since it's no longer gonna be needed, because with Starlink you can stream everything and it's super fast. Because it's already got the holes and everything and the wire runs all right here, we're just gonna go ahead and we popped it off already. We just took off the bolts. We're gonna clean up all of this old goop. As you can see that that's sticking to me. That is what happens when you use 5200 and you clean up your prep surface with alcohol. It inhibits it from curing and it just stays tacky. So although it never leaked or whatever, the 5200 never fully cured. So it's been tacky for the years that this thing has been installed. So yeah, so we got it off. We're gonna clean up and then uh, move forward and get this thing installed. How goes the battle, AJ? It's too short for this. <laughs> so we got the, the satellite off and we got the spot that we're going to mount the new Starlink. And right now we are trying to get to the base of it underneath here on the flying bridge. There's no access. So this is the only access. And this is a flip down overhead uh, holds all the gauges that are down there. We have to get this out of the way so we can get access up in there. Um, and you can see it get back there. Yeah. Get to the to the back of the actual Starlink mount, so we can uh, mount it securely and run the wires. So we've got the old satellite off. We've gotten all the the old bolts out. We went and picked up some new hardware that we know because we determined the location that we're going to actually mount it. It's going to be right here. Um, it's pretty obvious, but it was just kind of a pain getting to inside of here because we had to actually drop the console downstairs. The sealant inside of these old holes, so they're no longer going to leak. This was the old through hole or the old uh, weather seal for these two cables, which went to the antenna, the old satellite antenna. And then we are going to install the Elon Musk special here, which is not just these two, but basically it's going to, it's like what I call a clamshell, and I think that's actually their name brand name. It's going to go over the hole, over the existing cables. We're going to mount all of this here. But before we do that, we have to get the new cable right here, down through there in the right length, and cut a hole in its weatherproofing, which is this black grommet right here. I'm going to drill a hole uh, just almost the size of the diameter of the cable. It's actually going to be, I don't love the instructions, but I think it's usually just a little bit bigger, but it makes it a nice little tight fit. And then you cut a slit in this so you can wrap it around it. And then once this gets in there, it compresses on the hole, which will compress on the cable and then compress that little 45 degree split, creating a nice weather tight seal. We got our star rank antenna mounted. I think for the most part, looks pretty straight. Nice and orientated with the bolt. It's all connected. Got a nice little clamshell in there for weatherproofing. Now, right in the cable and mount the modem. Gonna go uh, see if this is gonna fix any problems for me. I gotta go to a boat right down there, and he's got some air conditioning display problems. We're gonna see if we can't. If it's just a display or if it's data cable or whatever, it's an older unit. So these things are known for having problems with the cables. So we'll check and see what we can find. But I brought a brand new one with me just in case for troubleshooting. Another lovely day in Key West. It's a little warm, but not too bad. Detailers have been here. You can see their stuff. Wow. All white interior. I don't know if I would like that on a sport fish, how you'd ever keep this stuff clean. Can you guys see? First things first, we're gonna pop this cover off here. There we go. Pop these screws out of here. Four screws in them. So this is an older ocean. I would guess it's early 2000s. So that one's not running, so I know I need to fix that. Now, let's see. Okay, that's all running. Let's see here. Fan is on, feels cold. So let's leave that on and let's go troubleshoot the bridge. 
So that one's working and running. We'll leave it run for a while. And I'm, like I said, gonna turn on the bridge and we'll go up there and check the bridge air conditioning. Bridge AC. Where might I find the air conditioning control? Oh, it's downstairs. I doubt it. So there's the evaporator with the fan. Not up here. All right, let's go down here. So I doubt it would be in here. Okay, so that's for this. Okay, that's blowing cold. So we found a display. The fan is running, but the compressor doesn't appear to be coming on. So we're gonna try a different display because that one has been out here in the salt air for a long time. So we're gonna plug in this new one and see what we can figure out. Let's go down and see if she's running. For some reason, it's calling for cool, but it's not cooling. So let's see what's going on, yeah. All right, I put that new display in, I cycled the power, got it hooked up and it seems to be running. Uh, it's cooling right now. So that's the bridge AC running. Make sure this guy's still running. Yep, master stateroom's still running. I'm gonna run to my truck and get some dielectric grease because these connections, these old four pin connections right there, they're known for having uh, corrosion issues and I'm also gonna put some dielectric grease on the connections up here. So let's run over the truck real quick and get some. You know, it's not too bad, but if you're working, you're sweating. Here's my dielectric grease. There it is. This is good stuff right here. Super lube. Okay, now what we're gonna do here, just put a little dab on there. RJ12 connectors. Take this apart right here. Put some in there. Just keep that going. Take this little guy right here. All right, let's go up top side here and we're going to put some more grease on the connection up here and put this back together. We'll leave that on for a few more minutes. Master air conditioning right there. The fan is blowing, but it doesn't feel cold. So let's go, let's go see if the compressor is running. All right, well, the master, which is that, is cooling, but it appears, I'm thinking it might be low on refrigerant. So I'm gonna go grab my gauges. All right, so this one seems to be a little low on refrigerant. So I'm going to put the gauges on it. Well, there's a little bit of refrigerant on there. That's good. Okay, I got that hooked up. That's open. That's good to go. Let's turn this on. Oh. Well, it appears we are a little low, so we're going to put some refrigerant in there. Let me check my pressure temperature chart here real quick, though. Yeah, so we should be around 125, and we're not. So we're going to gas it up and see what happens. All right, it appears that it's cooling, but it does not have enough water flow, so we're going to go turn everything off. We're going to pull that strainer and make sure it's clean. I mean, what you doing, AJ? Uh, disconnecting the satellite office stand so we can run the new cable. Before we showed up, there was no dish, no Starlink, or no nothing. In fact, in this exact spot was a satellite dish, or satellite dome. But we did kind of run into a small issue. Always happens anytime you're doing a new install. Is the standard cable that came with it uh, was roughly 25 feet. And originally, it was going to go down, up to the left side here. Go into underneath this cap, which goes down that tube, which goes right into the side there, and it would have hooked right up to the modem, no problem. Except that that is so packed full of wires that it is impossible to run anything. We had already had the wire ran, ready to go. We had to backtrack order that new longer cable, because now we're going to go through this cap over here, which has a, I believe that is a GPS antenna that's on there, so we're going to pop that off, run the wire from underneath, there to here. It's gonna go down the tube, around the front of the Flyden Bridge Dome, 
then it's going to come down on the port side and then into the center console. So I've got a little bit to do, but it's not going to take too much longer. See that little opening behind us? That's where all the, the gauges and everything flip down and run the actual data and power cable for the Starlink antenna. Do that right there. And then it actually had to go across to that bar right there and come all the way down. And then it goes inside that aluminum or stainless steel bar there. And then it pops into right there say hi aj hello so aj's in there he was the guy downstairs i was the guy upstairs with a little bit of orange lead line that we put on there we actually test the uh, orange lead line it's basically that same line that people use to uh square off and level off uh, building frames in uh, building areas and whatnot and squaring up fence posts and whatnot so we use that we just tied it to the old satellite cables pulled those down once those are down then we had the lead line in there and then put a little electric tape and some lube we usually use like a uh, super lube when I tie up the end, especially on the Starlink one, because you kind of see here, it's an odd shape. It doesn't exactly go around corners and whatnot easy. Just kind of builds it up with a little bit of electric tape to give it kind of a cone shape. Put some super lube on there. That's way it'll slide through tight spots. So you got to kind of be careful of pulling and pushing at the same time. So you're not breaking the lead line, not bending, especially on these data cables. They have that USB connection that you want to mess that up screw that up you can see all the excess that we have right now but it still has to run all the way over there and into the cabinet now if you're looking at this you're probably thinking that is way too much and it is but they only had two sizes available uh, really really long or too short so we had to go with really really long uh aj behind you here is our resident tech expert teamed it out to what 190 megabytes a second or 290 uh, it was pushing about 100 megabits per second on the phone. It was pushing between 200 and 300 megabits per second. Yeah. Which is uh, pretty good. Yeah. Considering you can use it anywhere in the world when yeah. you're underway, I'd say it's pretty awesome. I mean, he's only streaming shows on this Wi-Fi. He's definitely a Lamborghini in a- uh, Yeah. But that's that. And that brings us to our next job down in the engine room here. The owner said that he was getting some water in the bilge and that something was leaking. He thought it was a sea strainer. So we just got here and first thing that we did notice is that there is a lot of water on the ground. So and you can probably see it running. Yeah, from right there. I personally hate where people tell me that they have a water leak because usually what it is, is they see standing water and they go, I got a leak somewhere, find it. You can't see the water running or anything. It could have been that while they were running a sink, there was a leak. It could have been draining, there was a leak. It could have just been two days ago when it rained, there was a leak. So, you know, you always have to do a little bit of detective work. But in this case, it was actually kind of nice because we've only been on the boat for about Fine. two or three yeah. minutes. And uh, we can already see the water running from somewhere behind that strainer. First thing we're gonna do is start removing some of the parts so we can get a better view uh, to see is it uh, a loose hose maybe? Is there a break in the hose? Is there a break in the plastic? And just figure out if it's something that we can just isolate real quick today and then come back with new parts or is it something that we gotta fix now? So today we are replacing this brass elbow for this AC pump. They had a pinhole in the back. It's leaking water everywhere. So right now we're just gonna take the time, get this off, replace it, and then we're also gonna reattach this hose for the water maker. Good deal, a nice chilly morning. Yeah, honestly. Out here in the harbor. Got me wearing a hoodie, which is quite, <laughs> quite rare. And I hope it's water repellent. I'm about to get wet today, bud. Everything's off. So right now we got the uh, water pump for the AC. It has brand new fittings on them. TJ's been cranking away at that. Let's check that out for the past half an hour. They were quite seized on there. So right now I'm going to put that pump back, connect it back all up. TJ is gonna run to the shop real quick. We got some wrong fittings for the water maker filter. So he's gonna go get the right fittings for that. And then we'll get that all wrapped up and hopefully this boat will be good as new. Yeah. And we'll go check out the uh, elbow that was leaking also. Yeah. You can see here, this little pinhole that was leaking, that was spraying everywhere. Get a little shot of the inside. Looks like some barnacles or something had their way with it and ate it up pretty good. All right guys, we're just wrapping up here. We have the AC strainer right here. With the hose is hooked up to the uh, through hole seacock right here and the AC pump itself. Then we have the water maker all hooked up. We op tested everything. Everything seems to be working in order, cooling down quite nicely. 
So now these people have working AC again with no leaks. And uh, all we have to do now, just get the rest of this water out the bilge, clean it all up, lock everything down, and then we're good to go. We're all finished with this boat. I've been working on this yacht. It's pretty much relatively new. It's just about a year old. Been doing warranty work since September of last year on the air conditioning plant, chilled water. And I think I'm at the tail end of the work. I have, I don't know how many hours, probably over 50 hours of uh, warranty work on this thing. We're gonna do a final check this morning, see if everything's working. If everything's good, I'm gonna start putting it back together because I have a bunch of cabinetry torn apart. Anyways, let's go take a look. They just did the teak yesterday. It's looking pretty good. Whew, man, it's freezing in here. <laughs> Let's go see if we have any alarms. Wow, that's awesome. All right, you can see our chilled water supply temp is 49.6. All the sensors there are good. So that's chilled water return sensor, that's chilled water supply, and then that's the conditioner outlet temp. Set points of 43. Pumps are both on. There we go, that's chiller one is return and supply, both good. Chiller one is not running right now. These are all our temps and our pressures are all good. Everything's looking good there. This is chiller number two. You can see it's probably running because it's a little bit cooler. 46 and 49, that's good. Switches are okay. Yep, and it's running at, I don't know, probably two thirds speed. They're variable, they ramp up and down their RPMs as demand increases or decreases. And all the probes are good there. All right, we're good. Let's, um, we're gonna, Turn these up a little bit, because it is cold in here. All the sensors are working. Check everything down here. All right, here's the F stateroom. Yep, everything's good there. So we'll put everything down here to 70. I guess the owner's like it a little colder. Let's see where we're at here. So that water in temp on all these displays, that's what I'm checking, because what happened was all of them are reading like 170 degrees, and so the units wouldn't cool because that's out of parameters. Six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 temperature probes in total. It's a little crazy, but that's what I did. Oops. Uh, let's see here. All right. Yep. Temperature's good. Okay. So all of them are good. So we'll put this to 70. And now I got to start putting all this stuff back together. Put all this stuff back up here. So we'll get started. Okay, here's what you're gonna do. The light's right here. So in here, let me take these lid off. So what I need you to do in both these, it's kind of the same. You have to kind of take this and move it off to the side here. And that's about as far as it goes. What I need you to do, so see this coil of black wire right here yep. with that connector on it? The sensor goes in a little pocket down here, right down where it's right there. If you can see that, but see where that sensor goes down in there? You got to make sure those sensors are in those pockets. See that right there? See that yellow stuff uh, down there? Yep. With the black line going to it? Yep. So I need you to take this coil of wire, pull it up out of there. So the sensor is going to come out. I want you to wrap these connectors with black electrical tape okay. and then zip tie these up so they're not rubbing on any of the wire, on the, any of these copper tubes. Okay. You're going to do the same thing on both these. Then you're going to come back, put this back on here, line this up, tighten these three down so that it locks the lid down, okay? okay. Then come through here and you got to take all these wires zip tie these back up so they can't pull there's a thing back here see that yeah zip tie those all back up zip tie this stuff to all these things here same thing you got to open this up though and you got to do the same thing in this one with that temp sensor okay, okay you got to fix that wire that's there and in this one there's one more you got to do but i still want them wrapped in electrical tape then what i want you to do here let's go out what I'm going to have you do after you get done with all that, this is mine, I got that, you got the camera. Yep. Okay, so here's what I want you to do. When you're all done, zip tying up before you put the covers back on. Okay, you tracking? Yep. I want you to come up here. Okay, it'll say mode cool. Hit this down button and all these sensors, 45, 44, 72, because if it's reading like 140 or 107 or 400, yeah, that means that something came loose downstairs. 
Let me go over once more. I'm going to go back downstairs. It, I got it. It's right here. I think the captain is on his way. He's running late or something. But let me go downstairs here and do one more check. All right. So I put all this back together. That's good to go. Let's go down here and make sure this room is all good to go. That's all good. That's good. Okay, we're done in here. Check this one. That's on. That's all good. This one is done and good. And this one, this was the hardest one. I just want to make sure these one more time are good. All right, everything looks good in there. Nothing left in here. All right, okay. quality check interior is all done. TJ's going to finish buttoning up those units down there with some zip ties and then close everything up. Then he's going to come up and check all the temperatures like we just discussed and make sure that's all good. If that's good, then we're done. And then I can send in a huge, huge pile of paperwork I have to submit and then maybe I can get paid someday. On to the next one. So we got some bad news. One of our long-term clients who is a retired, I will call him combat surgeon. How about that? He has fallen and broken a hip and he is in the hospital. So we texted him to check in on him and asked if he would like us to go down and do a courtesy check on his boat. And he said very much so he would love that. So it shouldn't take long. We're just gonna go down and take a quick look, make sure everything is ship shape. Well, yeah, it's overcast too. So you can see we're not getting the best of weather right now. Everybody's got their little enclosures up to keep the wind out of the bars. That's Dante's with their famous swimming pool, or maybe I should say infamous swimming pool. The door is open. There we go. Look at those huge old Mercuries. I think those are the V12 600s. Crazy how much outboard motors have evolved lately. Hello. Okay. We've got everything secured. I'm going to leave a couple lights on. Bilges are okay. We do have to come and we do have an air conditioner that's tripped out on high P5. We'll turn that back on and see what happens and call it a day. Yeah, I really hope he uh, recovers. He's a good guy. He goes to uh, Syria and Gaza and stuff and works like for those doctors without borders and does charity work and stuff. He's retired. So that's like his hobby now. And I don't know how long it's going to take for him to recover. Hopefully it's fast.